Welcome back to Survey of Engineering. Uh, we are starting our computer science unit. This video will cover a brief introduction to computer science and some computer basics. So what's in this video, we'll talk so about some common jobs in computer science. We are going to also talk about the strengths and limitations of computers and the basic components inside the computer. Portfolio questions for this uh, video are, what is the difference between software and data? And list three peripherals of a computer. So jobs that are available in computer science are a computer hardware engineer. This has to do with the actual physical components, design of the physical components of the, the computer, the chips, and all of the things that go inside the computer. Generally, these are electrical engineers and um, have a lot to do with circuit design. There's also a system architect. This person um, f figures out how all of the components will fit together. This might be within the computer or it could be within the network. Then we have programmers. Programmers are the people who write the code that runs on the computer. These could be applications, things like programs to play your music or social media network networking applications. Um, word processing applications, anything like that. Video game programmers, um, also automation control and robotics programming or web programming. Then we have a, an, an administrator. This could be a database administrator or a network administrator. Computer maintenance specialist or help desk. These are the people you call when you need help with um, something with your computer or with your computer programs. And finally, a computer or information research scientist. These are folks who are working on the cutting edge and the, the research within computation. And all of the salaries that you see here are median pay according to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. Most of the degrees or most of the jobs in computer science require a bachelor of science degree um, with their research type positions requiring more advanced degrees like PhDs. So we like to say that uh, computers are stupid. They are amazingly powerful at calculation and processing, but they are stupid in the sense that they only speak binary. Binary is the ones and zeros that they use to represent everything. A microprocessor within a computer doesn't know what anything means. All it does and all it's able to do is follow instructions. So for example, computers can play chess better than the best master in the world and can calculate what happens when two galaxies collide but can't answer the question what are these people doing which to you is probably pretty easy to answer just by looking at it inside a computer we have the computer processor this executes simple instructions, runs programs, crunches numbers, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, um, and these numbers could represent anything. The processor is just there to manipulate them. Also, a computer has memory. These are things like RAM, um, random access memory, which is sort of the temporary workspace of the computer and it can be, it's memory that can be quickly um, read and written to. ROM is read-only memory, and that's more permanent storage, This or not storage, but permanent memory, and it only can be read. Things like how the computer is supposed to start up are stored here, 
and that's what's called the BIOS. So that's always stored in ROM. Flash memory is um, memory that stays even though power may no longer be supplied to the memory with um, and, and that memory, the, the things in that memory stay there when power is removed, unlike RAM. When power is removed, RAM is completely wiped. The hard drive is where your programs and data are stored inside your computer and cloud memory is um, where memory or where programs or data are stored off of off-site off the computer in a uh, large storage facility. So the peripherals of a computer are things that help people communicate with the computer. So these are things like a video monitor, a keyboard, a mouse, or a printer. They can also be um, input-output devices like a motor or a sensor that a computer might use to um, output or input data. These are the things that are connected to the computer. So what is software with respect to a computer? There are several different types of software. First is the operating system. This is what tells the computer what to do when it turns on. It defines how the computer interfaces with the user, um, meaning is there going to be a monitor? Will there be a mouse or a touch screen or, or a keyboard? How is the computer going to communicate with the person? Um, there are things like operating systems are Windows operating systems. Mac has their own operating systems. There's also Linux or Unix, which you'll be less likely to encounter um, unless you uh, do some more advanced computing. Also, in mobile devices, such as phones, there's Android operating systems, iOS, um, Windows Mobile, or a Palm operating system. There are also peripheral drivers that are included in software. These are the things that tell the computer how to talk to a peripheral. So how do I control this mouse? How do I talk to this um, how does the computer talk to the keyboard and the com keyboard communicate with the computer? Also, there are software things that you're probably more familiar with. These are applications, programs, kind of things like Word, Excel, Firefox, anything that you run on a computer that you use um, to do your computing. Also, within computing, we're concerned about the data that um, software uses. This is the information that you are creating using software applications. So it's the numbers that you create in a spreadsheet or the documents that you write in a, um, a Word file. So a document file can be a Word document, an MP3 music file, a CAD drawing, um, spreadsheet or code that you've written for a program. Also there are things like databases. This is a collection of lots of records of very similar items. These could be medical records, they could be grades within a, gr a school system, things like that. For class next time, we are going to be doing a sorting activity to um, think about algorithms or how computers go about doing things. So think about how you might sort people in the class by their birth date, just month and day. And we'll see you next class.